Anti-capitalist narratives have become more and more commonplace within games, from the Outer Worlds blatant parody mentality to more subversive explorations like Citizen Sleeper. There's a lot I could say about the rise and prevalence of these narratives, citing younger and more diverse developers having access to tools and platforms to tell their stories, or perhaps the ongoing pandemic breaking apart a society so focused on productivity that it can't account for the needs of basic human life. Being told to get back to work and risk contracting a deadly virus or be condemned to homelessness. There's no legitimate argument to make that games aren't political, and I'd say little merit in claiming that they shouldn't be. That ship, if it ever even existed, has long since sailed. The better debate, in my mind, is how best to address such topics within the space. For instance, using a first-person shooter to tell a war story from the perspective of a soldier will inevitably come across as some flavor of military propaganda. Even in cases where your actions are made out to be horrific, in order for the game to be fun, gunning down enemy combatants has to be satisfying in and of itself. Messages of war is hell wind up drowned out by killstreaks and instant gratification. So in the case of anti-capitalist messaging, how do you explore that narrative within a playable, entertaining context? I think it'd be instructive to show an attempt at this in action via the recently released Hard Space Shipbreaker. Developed by Blackbird Interactive, Hard Space had an early access stint for around two years before fully releasing to PC, including Game Pass, in May 2022. You play as a debt-ridden laborer in some not-so-distant future, employed by the comically overbearing Lynx Corporation, to salvage usable material from decommissioned spaceships. You float around in zero-g, cutting and tearing out sheets of metal, usable tech components, and the further in you get, more and more dangerous yet lucrative objects like reactors, fuel tanks, and radioactive material. They're then to be sorted into three categories, a processor for metals and other odds and ends usable as is, a barge for intact equipment to be resold, and a furnace for the remaining scrap. The caveat being, regardless of your character's desire for work, they don't have much of a choice. You owe millions and millions of credits, not just from odds and ends costs of life, but even paying for the tools to perform labor. Down to being charged for dying, a penalty is applied for growing a new clone to continue to slave away. They'll work you to literal death and ask if you want to keep the receipt. Along the way, you'll get to listen to other characters working the same job, or your higher-ups discuss the nature of the work and links as a corporation. It's worth noting that not every managerial character is portrayed as a greedy executive, most of that is relegated to a single caricature. Someone who posits themselves as just another employee, a cool boss you can get along with, who also literally silences anyone who disagrees with him. This is, while exaggerated, a rather realistic portrayal of the corporate ladder. You don't become wealthy or gain unjust power without, frankly, being an asshole. As profit margins are the metric used to determine the effectiveness of a crew or employee, and profit itself is measured by the amount of additional work that is needed to offset the cost of materials and tools, it's impossible to generate more profit without screwing someone over at some stage of production. Either overworking your employees, underpaying them, or overcharging for your goods and services, or all the above. See, capitalism as a concept is not interchangeable with labor, in both real life and a gaming narrative context. The actual job of salvaging old decommissioned spaceships for usable components is good in every sense. It's recycling with a sci-fi flair. But Hard Space chooses to frame that action around a corporation abusing human life for a dangerous job, as opposed to, say, a ragtag team of pirates finding dead ships in outer space, or playing as a robot who's designed for this work. Concepts like these exist in direct contrast to, and as commentary of, the exploitation of labor, respectively. Instead of, the contrast and commentary being orphaned from the gameplay in their entirety. Breaking apart ships and looting them is fun. The gameplay loop at its core is incredibly satisfying, as it should be. But if the gameplay is both fun, which it very much is, and themed and designed around abused labor, it ends up inadvertently romanticizing capitalism instead of the labor itself. Hard Space has a core disconnect between the messaging and the gameplay. Characters mention over comms that they would enjoy the work if they weren't being sent on long, dangerous hours for little pay. They're attempting to unionize, after all, not 
quit to find better paying work, they like the job in the abstract. So how are those long, dangerous hours, the abusive nature of Lynx, how is all of this actually presented in a playable context? First of all, on standard difficulty and higher, you're on a 15 minute time limit. This is done to create an atmosphere of being rushed to meet your quota, a tactic companies like Amazon are infamous for pulling IRL. Next, you're tasked with paying for your own oxygen, fuel, and maintenance on your equipment. You don't even start out owning your tools, you're paying a rental fee. As the game progresses, and once you can afford to, you can purchase your cutter, spacesuit, etc., thus reducing your cumulative debt. This also happens in real life. Long-haul truckers, for instance, often have to pay rental fees for their vehicles in hopes of one day owning them, and break that agreement if they quit. Meaning all the money and work towards owning your own tools and deciding how you'll use your labor would go to waste. Hardspace takes these necessary but annoying gameplay mechanics, time limits, resource management, and presents those as the ways your labor is being abused. Standing in opposition to this is your character's motivations to counteract the system. They don't have any. Your playable character doesn't speak. You don't have dialogue. Most conversations are presented over a radio as audio and subtitles with no visuals to match. Exploration about your fellow workers trying to unionize or complaining about the company end up existing outside of the gameplay itself. Some of the discussion does happen while you're cutting ships up, but often you'll just be stuck inside your rented room, staring out the window, listening to dialogue that you cannot interact with in any way. You get no input. You can't even customize or repair your gear while listening. You're just stuck hearing the story happen around you until you get back to the fun part, the exploited labor. The enjoyable parts of the game are exactly what the story exists to criticize. When such a disconnect exists between the gameplay being the labor and the narrative being an exploration of runaway capitalism, it implies that their extreme version of capitalism is itself what has gone too far, as opposed to the underlying ideology, and that it could simply be cut off like a tumor, when the reality is the entire system itself is fundamentally flawed. Unions are not a magic solution to labor exploitation, they are a tool in a battle against it. The end result is a prettied up fantasy version of current, real world capitalism. Much like how the employees say that they would like the job if they weren't being overworked, the underlying message becomes the status quo would be fine if this company didn't go too far, as opposed to a rejection of the ideology. Wow, Lynx is such an evil company. Thank goodness things aren't that bad in the real world. But they are. Lynx isn't a malicious company because they went too far, they're malicious because they see people as tools to make profit and nothing else, which is the fundamental truth of capitalism itself. This is not me saying that Hard Space Shipbreaker is pro-capitalism or the writers had a hidden agenda. They're very clearly frustrated with the world we live in, and the game's plot reflects that but the gameplay doesn't. There are attempts to take the gameplay into the realm of narrative cohesion, firstly being job site theft, taking components like working circuits or pistons to build a ship of your own. This is, again, narratively apt. Since your work doesn't compensate you fairly for your labor, you take matters into your own hands by making up a bit of the difference. And the decision making involved in choosing whether to barge a core system to meet your quota or scrap it to salvage materials at the cost of pay gives the player agency in this action. But the game falls shy of making this actually have any consequence. The components can also be found floating around for free, no risk required in collecting them. And strict to the studs, this mechanic essentially exists as a menu you throw parts into, and is required to actually finish the game. When it exists as necessity within the power structure of your employment at Lynx, the active action of the workplace theft is muddled. The other noteworthy mechanical implementation of anti-capitalist ideology is a spoiler for the end of the game, so fair warning. After repeated egregious overstepping from your middle manager, actively removing outspoken pro-union employees from the job site, you and your crew take industrial action. This is the act of organizing employees who are fed up with how they're being treated to 
go on strike, refusing to work on a scale that will immediately be noticeable by the company and the media at large. Or going even further, committing actual sabotage. In Hardspace's case, you start breaking core components of the ships on purpose, causing as much financial loss as quickly as possible in retaliation to Lynx's effective attempt at totalitarian contracting. But again, the core issue being that the desire to break things to make Lynx hurt is at odds with the entertainment value of the status quo. I have no investment in my protagonist, no stakes beyond NPCs who I cannot speak with. It absolutely can be satisfying to break things on purpose to hurt Lynx's bottom line, but only if an attempt is made at making the player feel the effects of their overwork, interrogating the inherently capitalist structure of this genre of game for more than just a finale. Not to say I think the game should be less fun on purpose, but no tangible pressure is put on the player. Your in-game debt is a comically high number to the point of losing all meaning, and no purpose is given to its value. My character is an empty shell. At the other end of things, several plot beats in the game revolve around another amateur shipbreaker, Kaido. He's nervous, homesick, but genuinely trying his best to earn his keep. However, after a few too many accidents, the higher-ups put pressure on Kai. This genuinely good-hearted hard worker risks losing his livelihood if he doesn't admit to the underground union activity, giving the company access to the logs and secure chats being used to organize, which they, of course, promptly bust. Then, in the finale, again, big spoiler here, Kaido nearly dies permanently due to your manager disabling his genetic backup in retaliation for your strike. The audio recording of your boss literally trying to kill you is leaked to the press, forcing public outcry against Lynx. All of the most important plot beats in the game revolve around Kaido, so like, why isn't he the player character? He's someone who's in the dark to workplace revolution, industrial action, and malicious compliance. Therefore, serves as a surrogate for the game explaining these concepts to the audience. He's someone who has stakes, who can't afford to lose his job for more tangible reasons than a big, scary red number. There'd be a scene of you, as Kaido, being contacted by your supervisor and threatened with expulsion, being forced to reveal the organization efforts to continue working, continue playing the game, showing the player directly directly how union busting works instead of hearing about it afterwards on the radio like every other plot point in this game. Long stretches of tearing up ships with no story to then be given conversations with no agency, all in an attempt to pad the story's length. Pardon the pun, but Hard Space's plot is spaced out. Notably, near as an outside observer can tell, this title underwent several rewrites during development, tooling and reworking the plot to reach the point we're at in the final release, and it shows. There are beautifully animated full cutscenes showing your suited up player character tearing apart ships, flying away, and it's all stunning to look at, but narratively vacuous. And then, important plot beats, cutscenes where events actually progress the story are slideshows at best, and more often than not, unvisualized dialogue. This is what happens when your storyline gets overhauled multiple times as you close in on release. The game's messaging is not catastrophically flawed, its delivery of its message is. The way Hard Space Shipbreaker discusses capitalism assumes the player already agrees with the writers, and thus is a flawed teaching tool. It keeps the narrative within a bubble, walls built up by disconnection between intent and implementation. It has good gameplay, it has a good message, but they exist as water and oil, dulling the effectiveness of one another. Nothing in my mind makes this clearer than the game's play-on mode. After the climactic, if highly scripted and laggy, complete shipbreaking designed to lose Lynx enough money to force action to be taken, the galactic government orders Lynx to recognize your union, you're given financial compensation for the human rights abuses, and... Uh, the time limit? Having to pay for your own tools and fuel and equipment? None of that changes. The mechanics used as stand-ins for real-life systems worth critiquing, untenable quotas and expensive day-to-day -day costs for your means of production, go unaddressed by unionizing. The game's mechanical implementation of exploitation is itself intrinsic to the difficulty, and thus nothing of function to gameplay is altered. And this is pitched as a victory in the story, even though, really, what's 
changed. Your debt being wiped out? That's not organized labor. That's just a class action lawsuit. That's, that's Domino's not compensating their delivery drivers for spent fuel and repeatedly being sued for it, which is a totally acceptable outcome to them. Paying out occasional legal fees is cheaper than paying their employees. Hardspace tries to walk a line here, making a point of the fight against exploitation continuing even after your strike. That's good, that's realistic, but the metaphors used for the unfair labor cannot be uncoupled from the structure of the gameplay itself. And that's not even getting into the comeuppance for your higher up, who remember tried to murder a member of your crew. He's sent back to his old pre-promotion job, working in a warehouse. Like, you're using labor as punishment in your story about how labor should be unionized. Your stand-in for consequence is the same sort of dehumanizing work you're claiming to have addressed. Just launch him out of an airlock. As games of all kinds continue to have political messages baked in, they benefit from not trying to retrofit narratives of change into genres which themselves exist as reflections of contrary ideology. In the case of Hard Space Shipbreaker specifically, I still enjoyed the game and would recommend it to fans of the genre. But I must admit, I was hoping they'd attempt to subvert the capitalist tropes that are common in resource management and simulation games, rather than continue to romanticize the gameplay of capitalist industry while making you feel bad for enjoying it. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and take it easy.